So um, uh, the, I'm just going to open it up to you at this point. Is there um, a story that you want to share about a time where speaking Spanish uh, really came in handy that maybe a student could relate to or um, uh, it, that would illustrate the importance of knowing Spanish? Or <clears throat> anything else you want to share? Now's your time. <laughs> Wow. Um, that's tough. I mean, there's a lot of different stories, but I'm trying to think of one that would be like... So there's a story about... Um, uh, it was in 2011, and um, I was traveling through Latin America, through Central America. It was when I was... Um, I had... I'd been working in, in Roatan, Honduras on the, uh, a nonprofit, uh, sport development nonprofit project. And so my goal was to leave there, travel through Central America, and then, you know, go to Colombia and fly home. So I left out of Honduras on the Caribbean side and bought a ticket to return out of Cartagena. And so I just, you know, at that point, I'm like, well, I have to get there. And so um, one of the most memorable stories of that um, was when I, when I was in Managua, in Nicaragua, and I'd spent some time there and visiting friends and surfing. And of course, you know, the, the uh, I could go on and on about stories of surfing, but, you know, this one, this one is... Um, it was it was pretty amazing and and uh, unique. And so I'm sitting in Managua at the bus station, and I'm sitting beside this guy, and his name's Victor. And so, at first he thinks I'm from Argentina, um, I guess because of the way I look. So he assumed I was from Argentina, and then I and then I I was like, no, I'm, you know, I'm from the U.S. And partly because of like my Spanish, he just, you know, kind of deduced that that was where I was from because, you know, he probably made the assumption that most Americans don't speak Spanish. And my accent has a bit of a Argentine slash Uruguay sound to it. Um, but anyways, that's really not the most important part of the story. So we get on this bus, we sit together and we're riding from Managua to San Jose, Costa Rica. And so I'm I'm going there. I've sort of booked a hostel or something. And um, anyways, we spend the, you know, the six plus hours talking and he worked in the, um, he worked in the, the um, coffee industry. He was an individual who would go around, travel all over the world um, and would sort of help set up these machines that would sort coffee. And, you know, so we were talking about coffee and, and I mean, I love coffee. So that was an easy conversation. And so uh, I was just kind of filling him in on what I was doing. And, you know, long story short, like we start, we go, we cross the border, we're in Costa Rica, we're getting close to Stan, San Jose. And he's like, where are you staying? And I was like, I don't know, I'm just staying in a hostel in central San Jose, you know, no big deal. And he's like, you want to stay at my house? And I'm like, you know, and again, I, w I didn't want to make any assumptions. And I'm like, are you sure you have room? You know, I didn't know if he was uh, an affluent individual or someone who, you know, was a bit less affluent, but, you know, sort of offering me a floor or something. And, uh, and I was like, is your wife okay with that? I mean, you know, for all intents and purposes, I'm a stranger, you know? And, um, and he's like, yeah, oh, yeah, no problem. You know, I, I checked with her. She said, it's fine. And so I'm like, yeah, I'll take you up on it. Why not? He's like, oh, I got a whole spare bedroom. You got your own bathroom and everything. I'm like, okay, fine. And so my goal was to stay there for a weekend uh, in Costa Rica. I was just kind of passing through um, en route to get to Panama and do a bunch of other stuff um, in Panama and then sail to Colombia. And so um, I'm there at his house, beautiful house in uh, sort of outside San Jose. And I just bonded with the family, you know, and, and he was just this amazing individual, caring and, and just, you know, as if I was his brother or something. And his wife was from the Dominican Republic and her parents were there. And so we were talking about the Dominican Republic. We were talking about some of the history of the Dominican Republic that her mom as a woman 
was involved in, in essentially standing up to um, sort of the authoritarianism of Trujillo in the time. And, you know, I was just like, this woman's awesome. She's powerful. She's, you know, putting her chest up against an AK-47, essentially, and, you know, uh, challenging this dictatorship. And uh, so I just kind of gravitated to the family. And, um, and, you know, I remember when it was time to leave, Victor, he's like, you sure you want to leave? And I'm like, man, I've been here for 10 days. Like, I, you know, I got to keep on going. And it's, you know, when I travel, I get sort of used to uh, saying hi and saying bye. Like, you know, and you just, those people become fond memories. But this one was really hard. And, um, you know, I was really bummed. I, I probably could have just moved in there, quite frankly. But anyways, I kept traveling and we stayed in contact. And, you know, I even came back at one point and visited him in, in, in San Jose when I was doing some other stuff. And... You know, so I kept going. I went to Colombia. I did my, you know, my spent my time there and flew back to the, you know, to the United States and actually flew back to work here. And so, anyways, fast forwarding, um, I started to see on social media that um, he was wearing this hat and he didn't have any hair. And I'm like, man, I wonder what's going on with Victor. And uh, and I didn't. I don't know if I reached out or not actually. And I can't remember. And anyways, very long story short, he ended up passing away from with cancer. And so I was just like, wow, you know, just, you know, my, my good buddy is, is gone. And so um, I know this is maybe like not the like exciting story, but I just it's just something I felt like talking about, I guess. And um, so this whole thing that I just told you all about Victor, about. Uh, his personality, his his love um, for people, for humanity. You know, again, I probably would have had a hard time getting, you know, first of all, I probably wouldn't have been on a stay at his house, but just connecting with him had I not known Spanish. So first and foremost, you know, having that deep connection with somebody from another country, another culture, and sitting beside them on the bus would have never been possible had I just been an English speaker. We would have fumbled through some conversations and maybe laughed about coffee a little bit, but like, you know, I would have never been able to connect with this family. And so this story I'm telling you, I know it has sort of a um, sad ending, but I guess what I wanted to end with is that I wrote his wife, uh, Margarita, this whole story in an email and, you know, sort of kind of sad as I'm writing it, reminiscing on this beautiful moment I had with like this, you know, just such an amazing individual. And I just wanted to send her sort of condolences and remind her of the sort of genuine individual that her husband was. And little did I know, she read that as a eulogy. And so um, I was blown away. And, and so I guess to end, um, you know, that would have never been possible. The impact he had on my life and the impact I was then able to have on all the people that were remembering his life would have never been made possible if I didn't know Spanish. And so, um, yes, we can travel and we can surf and we can play soccer and we can hike volcanoes and we can do all sorts of amazing and fun and exciting things. But at the end of the day, for me, having an impact and being able to connect on that sort of level with humanity is why I like knowing Spanish. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That's, that's all the questions I have, but Bethany, do you have anything for me?